Welcome to Map Breakdown. Last time we went over Himmelmat Expo Control. This time we're going to go over Hardpoint on Hydroelectric. So to kick it off, the first thing you always want to go over is your break off, right? So we'll do the break off for bad side over here. And whenever you're doing your break off, we want to understand what is our goal. Are we trying to fight the team and soak up P1 time? Or are we just trying to immediately uh, rotate and flip spawns? Are we trying to send three people to fight P1 and then one person to flip spawns, right? Those are a few different things that you can do. Um, you just want to make sure that everyone's on the same board. If you're playing solo queue ranked play, this is where I would say do what's best for your team. And I would say play for the spawns. So since we're going to be focusing a little bit more on solo queue, we'll do our break off. And I'll tell you guys right now for break off, most enemy teams, they send one guy top broken they send one guy middle to like pinch. They then send one guy top dome and then one guy challenges out of shed. One other thing I've seen is sometimes this guy instead just doubles up over here, right? So in my eyes, I want us to flip. The first play I'm gonna have us do is have a pistol out and whether you're an AR or a sub player, push out into this water. When you swim around this water, I would like you guys to hop up on this side once your teammates start shooting. So what I mean by this is if your teammates aren't like shooting or anything, don't hop up. But the second that your teammates are shooting, then you can hop up. The reason why is because we want to make sure the enemies are focused on our teammates. This will allow us to pop a guaranteed two piece um, or at least kill the guy off of hill. Right. So this guy's dead. And this guy's dead. This last guy right here, he's going to be prepared for you, looking at you. And this is where you want to ignore him, swim all the way around. And now at this point, you get to the back. And there's a few different things that may happen. The few things that may happen is these guys just spawn back here again. And you just got to play for them, right? They're going to be looking for you. You should be able to get another two piece. And then hopefully you flip. And what should happen most of the time is these guys won't spawn here. Instead, they would be spawning like back here over at back P3 and your teammates will start spawning at P2. This is our goal uh, for breaking off with bad sides. So now let's go over break off for good side, right? So for good side, again, typically some people go for this uh, fast rotation, one person up middle and then like, you know, two people hill or something like that, right? So Again, if you are an AR player, if you're an AR player, I would highly recommend to be number one. The reason why is because number one with the AR, he can hold down this entire middle lane. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. This player right here can hold down this entire middle lane. He can look over at P1 and he can also throw stun grenades, grenades over here. Not only that, but even if this guy gets through, number one, if he gets all the way through, hopefully you're paying attention to the kill feed and understand, oh shoot, this guy can be behind us, right? And then you look for him, you kill him, you're good. So AR players, I'd highly recommend to be this guy because we don't wanna flip spawns and you're doing a lot of the work for your team. Now, if you're a sub player, a sub player, I would say your best bet is to play the water again, right? So you're on good side, you're playing the water. And as you're going around in this water, you can do the same thing. You can hop up on the other side and look for these kills. If you get these kills and you look at your mini map and you still see that you have teammates in the back, you can push up inside of P3 and spawn trap the enemies that are spawning out all the way over here. Now, what if your teammate isn't hard blocking? What if this guy's pushed up and you look at your mini map and you see that, right? You don't want to flip spawns. So immediately get back into the water and start wrapping back around until you see one of your teammates spawn. If you don't see this teammate spawn here and instead he spawns out, that means you have one player in the back and you want to work the water and focus on the water. Okay. All right. So we just went over breakdown or sorry, we went over our break offs. And now what I'd like us to do is hop into a actual map, the private match, and look at these angles that we just talked about, right? Um, 
another reason for this is when we start going over like setups and breaks, you also definitely want to see, you know, the angles that you're sitting in. Where can you get shot? Where can you not get shot? Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and load up hydroelectric. Load it up. All right. So as we're loading up for this hydroelectric, the next thing we would start worrying about or focusing on is just setups, right? Just so we make sure that this is um, pretty like clear and step by step. We went over our break offs. Now we're going to go over our setups, right? Let's say we won rotations. We won rotations. We got three to four kills. We have spawns. Now we just need to set up. Um, so what we can now talk about is our setup for like P2, right? So since we spawned on this side, we're going to go over the setup for P2 real quick. So let's say we are red team over here and P2 just popped. Literally, when it comes down to a setup and you know that you have three dead or you rotated early, just make sure you have all three lanes filled, right? So as you guys can see, this is the right lane, this is the middle lane, and then this is the left lane. Typically, you would have an AR back here holding the left and the middle. You can have one player pushing up middle to hold middle, and then the other two players are just baiting and switching each other at P2. So um, it, it, now it's just a matter of who do you want to be, which again, if you're an AR player, I'd highly recommend be number one because you're going to win all of your gunfights, you're going to hold spawns for your team, and you have some pretty good crosses that you can hold uh, all three lanes from. Now, if you're a sub player, I would highly recommend to be, you know, the player in hill, of course, uh, just to soak up as much time as possible. So just to clear up P2 real quick, if you're an AR player, you're up here, right? So you can look over there, you can look middle, and you can look left. If you're the submachine gun player, you are going to be playing in time over here, just soaking up, right? And I would highly recommend to first play this spot where people are trying to see you, you play your life, and this player is getting all the kills for you, right? So again, you're playing your life in heal, baiting, and your teammate is getting the kills every single time you peek. You peek, get behind cover, call him out, this guy gets your kills. Now, if this guy dies, I want you to reposition and lay down right here to hold your own cross and play for that gunfight. So you're playing here, baiting and switching, baiting and switching, your teammate dies, you get into the corner, you sit there, you wait. Awesome. Okay, cool, so we went over the setup for P2. Now, let's just go over that quick break off um, for uh, P1, right? So we're going to talk about our break off for P1 and not only that, but our rotation for P3. So like we said, break off, if you're a submachine gun player, typically you're hitting this water route, you're pulling out your pistol. You, your ARs are already uh, hard blocking dome and broken. You probably get a pistol kill right here. You keep swimming, keep swimming. Right here, you should be able to get a decent flank off. You kill the players on hill, probably kill the player top, and then you can get inside and start spawn trapping, right? But if you look at your minimap and you don't have any teammates blocking, you get back into water and you rotate for P2. Now, talking about P3, I would do this exact same like route, right? So now, fast forwarding from P2 to P3, it's 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I want you to rotate for P3. You can hit this entire water route all the way back here. And by the time you get back here, most of the time I can kill a player in hill, kill a player top, and then I can back up to right here and either play for spawns or uh, just spawn trap the enemies, right? So now we can go back to P3. So P3, we just said it where over here, there's 30 seconds. You push out. Your teammate soaks up the rest of time. You're rotating, rotating. You pop up right here. Again, usually I see like one player in hill watching middle and then one player top watching front so I can get this two piece. Once I get this two piece, I either play the back for spawns, right? So if you know you want to play for spawns, you would want to sit back here. 
If you don't want to play for spawns in P3, which some teams don't, instead they rather spawn trap. If you want to spawn trap, stand right here. So again, just to show you real quick in game, if you're trying to spawn trap, stay right here. The enemies will be spawning on you inside of this building, and the enemies will be spawning back rock. But if you want to block the spawns, sit right here for P3, okay? Awesome. So a few other things that we really haven't talked about yet is like places to sit, right? So like if we already have an AR player hard blocking, where again, we're in a perfect setup. So now we're blue team, right? So we have an AR right here, hard blocking. We have a player holding middle. We have a player working front and the player in time is helping front, right? Just a basic setup like this. You'll probably find yourself in this a lot in ranked play. Um, again, AR, you're sitting right here. Sub player, you're probably sitting inside of here. And just a heads up, the enemies will be spawning out here. Cool. All right. So going back over this setup, let's say we are in rotation set number two, right? So what I mean by that is it's second P3. The score is like 150, 180, and it's P3 again, right? So when it's P3 again, sometimes you want to sit in spots that people don't expect. So what I mean by that is first set of rotations of P3, you probably play right here, right? You get like two kills, you reposition, and then you play right here. In the future, when the enemies are breaking, they know that you sit right there. So what are they going to do? They're going to aim at you through the wall, and they're just going to pre-fire and get you dead, right? That is exactly what they should do. So to prevent you from just immediately dying, don't play the same spot. If it's, you know, first P3, you could play in this spot, play in this spot. But the second time it's second P3, play an off angle, play it different, right? Where you can just sit in this corner, soak up time, watch your left. And what's going to happen is these guys down here, they're going to be like, uh, he's not there. Okay. Is he close? Uh, he's not there. What? Where is he? And they're just looking for you. They can't kill you. Boom. You win the gunfight. All right. So now just to make sure that we go over the rest of the map, we're going to quickly talk about rotation for P4, right? So obviously one player back here to hard block. The spawns are over here and bad spawns for P4 are right here, right? So bad spawns for P4 are over here. Um, good spawns right here. So let's talk about breaking now, right? So now we need to break. Whenever you're breaking, you want to remember where people sit, right? So when you remember where people sit, such as for P4, sometimes people have an AR back here. They have a player sitting right here to soak up time. And then they have a player like top broken, right? If you're an AR player, when you're rotating for P4 and you need to break P4, I would highly recommend knowing that those players sit there and you get top broken. And as you can see, I'm already pre-aiming that back left head glitch. The reason why is a lot of people sit in that same spot. So that's the first thing that I'm pre-aiming. And long and behold, there might be a person there. You get one kill. Now, what's the second place we know where people sit? Back rock. So now you pre-aim back rock. Boom, you get a set a two-piece. Now you know that the player on time sits close time right here. So boom, you ego challenge, you get a three piece, you push to the back. Now you have spawns for P4 and you do a setup for P4. That's normally what you want to do when you're breaking is just know where the enemies are. Where do they sit? Now have perfect centering on them to kill them. Um, obviously... That's a perfect world, right? Where you can break all by yourself. Sometimes you're forced to break with your team, which if you're forced to break with your team, just understand to fill in the lanes, right? So if you're like your teammates are pushing up middle, one guy's going outer, one guy went inside, you should probably go top, right? Or you would go over here. Like if your teammates are already fighting and they're already dying, you need to go top broken. But if your teammates are like back here and you're the front line, so if you're the front line, go dome and do this play that we just talked about. 
because then your teammates would fly in, win trades, hopefully you get spawns. But if you spawn up and you see your team like this, you need to get to your team and get to top broken. And that's going to go for the same for like P5, right? So talking about P5 now, obviously good spawns will be spawning back here, spawning back here. And bad spawns would be spawning at like dome and spawning middle for P5. Now, um, again, if you're an AR player, you want to play back here. So you hard block and you hold good spawns. And if you're a sub player, usually you're playing inside and you're finding two different angles to sit in. If you're breaking, again, this is another scenario where you can remember where players are and just preem and shoot them. But let's say you're a sub player and you want to play for a break, right? So most setups that I've seen for P5 is something like this. Or like they have two players in hill, one top, one bottom, one guy's hard blocking, one guy's over here, right? So whenever you want to break this, um, Moving here. get rid of this. So whenever you want to break P5, again, you can just know where people sit and you can just take the gunfights, right? Take the gunfights. But let's say we understand that the enemy team, they leave lanes open, right? So looking at this tack maps right now, we can see that these guys, they have middle lane. They almost kind of have left lane. But they're missing right lane, right? And if you guys know, we understand that we can flank something like this to break P3. Or, I mean, to break P5, right? So, um, that's exactly what you would want to do here. Is just understand where's your opening, right? Whenever you're breaking in, in hard point, it's where the enemy's sitting and where's your break. So, right here, I said you can flank through this left-hand side flanking flanking make sure you go all the way around and then by the time you get right here um the enemy is going to be like up here right and you can look for him you can jump across and then once you get these kills very well the enemies could be spawning there so you would want to look for this kill right here as well and then just to show you guys on the other side on the other side, you would literally just play this water again. Like, I love playing this water. It works like a charm every time. Eventually, people will do that and start predicting that. So I'm going to need to find a new thing, right? But hopefully, again, when the first time you play P5, you hit this water route. And now this guy who is over here who died to you is, like, tweaking. And he's looking for you, right? And then that's why the second time you hit a P5 break, you hit through the middle. Because he might not even be looking at you. Now, uh, last... But not least, you know, how do we actually break P5? I would always recommend just getting to high ground. So uh, right here, there's a hop up. As you can see, I can barely hit it. I don't practice it enough, but you can practice this hop up. I don't know why it's so difficult to hit, but if you can get to this wall, hit this hop up, challenge from up top, right? Or if you're this guy back here and you killed the anchor, and you don't want to flip spawns, right? So, like, let's say it's 30 seconds left of, of P5. You need to rotate for P1, right? So, you kill the anchor, but you don't want to block the spawns. So, instead, you fight hill. And when you fight hill and kill all of these guys, they're all going to be spawning right here. And they're just going to be flooding right there and flooding right there. So, again, just to show you real quick. If there is about 30 seconds, uh, that's ugly. Let me change that. 30 seconds of P5. And you're this player right, so like you're this player right here breaking. If, once you kill this guy right here, if you pre-aim right here, this guy is going to spawn out. But with 30 seconds left, you don't want him to spawn out at P1. So you would kill him and then immediately rush and kill these guys in hill and they would all spawn back here and now you know where they're coming from, right? The only place they can really hit you from are these two different angles, right here and right here. So this was just a quick rundown on how to do a map breakdown specifically for hydroelectric hardpoint and it's just having a game plan, right? where you find these two spots to sit in and then the next you know set of rotations you sit in two different spots 
you already know where you're rotating to break a spawn. You already know where to rotate and to set up to help your team win a hard point, right? Um, this whole map breakdown, I did it in 20 minutes, but realistically, this is supposed to take you like a full hour, 90 minutes. I've seen some people take a full three hours because they go pinpoint down to the last detail where it's like, okay, we spawn here, we get two kills, those two guys spawn there, so let's throw our nades right here. So like, yeah, let me do that real quick, right? So like a quick example of how in depth people get, let's go back to like a P4 setup, right? Where we just get three dead. So like, let's say we kill three front and we know that there's one guy dome, right? So number four gets three dead. We know that they're spawning here, but number four pushes out that blocks the spawn, pushing this guy over here. He plays for this two-piece. He gets this two-piece, and now he can throw his grenades over here to prevent these guys from getting to their fourth teammate over here. And no matter what, this guy wants to play his life and not die. Because if this guy just plays his life the entire time, this forces a fatal funnel on the right-hand side at P2, where this is where you have your entire team just kill all four enemies. And that was just a really quick, you know, minute details on how to perfectly win uh, Hardpoint. Um, but I didn't have anyone stop by for any questions. But please, anyone who watched this, let me know if you have any questions. And I'm always happy to help. Other than that, this was a breakdown. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much and peace.